North Rosedale Community House kitchen is going to be remodeled, and, which is great, yes? <laughs> so January, by being a low month, um, they're going to do it in January and February. So we're pushing our gala to March 29th. So mark your calendars, and that's when we will, of course, present the awards for um, the Best Island and Houses <coughs> and introduce the board. They will already have been sworn in, but we'll you know, introduce them to you. So look forward to seeing you all at the gala. And you'll get, uh, receive things, you know, the uh, e-blast as well as newsletters. And it'll be on brown paper tickets that you'll be able to purchase your tickets. And all tickets must be purchased in advance. There'll be no door sales. So I'll see you then. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from anybody? It'll be a spring fling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Deborah. We appreciate you and Mary. You always make a beautiful party. Now, another thing that we typically do at our gala is we present community service awards. Did everybody get a copy of the list? Put it up with the agenda. Rosedale Community Service Awards through the years. We'd like to recognize the amazing efforts of so many people in our neighborhood who do so much. So many people have a little job, and it all adds up to an amazing neighborhood. We'd like to recognize those people. Here's a list of the people who have most recently been recognized. So I'm giving you this list so that you can also be thinking as you go through your life in the next month or two because what I'm wanting from you is nominations. If you could send a nomination by the end of the year, we can definitely get it a slate together to recognize people by the March Gala. So please give a thought. To the community service awards that we should be handing out. And here's just a couple of examples, here you see volunteers at the pancake breakfast, more volunteers at the Easter egg hunt, here all of your board members swearing to uphold your bylaws, we're all volunteers, it's important to remember, everybody who's doing all these things, we're all volunteers, and it's quite an amazing accomplishment when you think about the level of engagement we have. Um, so many people contributing. It's really a wonderful place to live. So think about who, either on your block or in your purview, somebody you've noticed who really goes above and beyond to really help their neighbors and help our neighborhood be clean and safe and wonderful the way it is. Shoot me an email. Give me a phone call. Get their name into the list, OK? Very good. Now, Frank, Raven, right? He's always out in the foyer. Frank! <laughs> Frank is going to give us our financial report and let us know how we're doing on dues. But first, he's going to tell you about our magnificent new signs, which he has made. Talk about the sign first, this one. Um, we, Phil and I, uh, power washed the uh, entrances at uh, Grand, Grand River and Ashton. Um, we acid washed them and then we uh, sealed them, waterproofed them. And the old signs that we had on there were kind of small for the size of the brickwork. So these will be two new ones going on there. Maybe tomorrow morning, weather permitting. Uh, we'll get those up. You can't read that. But, <laughs> but the old signs we didn't have the established in 1916 on them, so we added that. But other than that, it looks the same as the smaller ones. And I've got two small ones. I've just got to figure out where I might repurpose them somewhere, like Piedmont or Cartesian or so. Walls too. 
put them on a post or something. <laughs> um, news wise, we're at uh, 547. Um, I just had postcards printed as a news reminder and put a nice snow plow on there for people to move. Um, those will probably drop tomorrow or the next day. So if your neighbors haven't paid your dues, they'll be getting a little postcard reminder that uh, we'd like to have some good money. <laughs> Other than that, financially, we're, we're in good shape. There's no issues really. So we'll see where we at. I think we got a very good chance. Our goal was to get 600 members, and I think we got a very good chance of hitting it. So I did an email reminder. Uh, about a month ago, and about 25 people responded to that, so that was a good, good turnaround on that. So, anyway, that's where we're at with dues. Any questions? December. It's calendar a calendar year. year. It's calendar year. Okay. Correct. Okay. I'll do both. <coughs> January, uh, 2018 dues were due on January 1st, 2018. Right. And through the whole year, anytime you pay, you're paying your 2018 dues. January 1st, 2019, your 2019 dues will be paid. Now, if, you, if you've already paid your 2018 and you went online right now and paid again, that would be your 2019 dues. But if you haven't paid your 2018 dues yet, it's still going to count as your 2018 dues because we have to pay the snow plowing for this season. We pay the snow plow in four payments, November, December, January, and February. We split it up. So it's $45 except for people who live on Outer Drive or Evergreen. 
they pay 25 because their roads are plowed by Wayne County. Those are Wayne County roads, and so Wayne County is responsible for plowing their right of way. So that shows you that $20 of your $45 goes straight to the contractor to pay for the snow plowing. The other $25 helps to pay for the social events, the refreshments tonight, the newsletter, the e-blast, the website, and the lavish trips to Nassau. <laughs> 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 Other questions about money? I want everybody to pose your question about money. I think it's really important that people be alert and aware of the financing of their organization and feel comfortable asking questions because that's just like the most fundamental trust we have to have in order to keep our organization going. So anytime we're blessed with an extremely capable treasurer who really knows what he's doing and who everything always balances to the penny and who's very cooperative in trying to help us all keep within our budget, which we're pretty good at doing at this point. So right, people feel satisfied that the finances will move to the next item. <coughs> which is Zero Waste Detroit. Mark your mind. Good evening. On your table, there's two flyers. One is the flyer for a room they'll recycle. <coughs> Excuse me. Shredding, which is this Saturday, November 17th, at Christ the King from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Many of you are very, very familiar with that service. It's provided by Rochelle Recycle. Uh, for those of you who are new to the neighborhood, Rochelle Recycle started as a project of Rochelle Park. It is now a completely independent 501c3, so its finances have nothing to do with Rochelle Park's finances, and it's not supported by anybody other than those who contribute to it. Um, it's an extremely small budget, but since people were asking questions about money, I thought I'd clarify that immediately. And we won't be able to, we, we aren't able to do that service unless we get contributions because it costs $200 an hour for the shredder to help. So, that's the Saturday, a repeat, very popular event. The other item that's on your table is what is labeled as Rosedale Park Solid Waste Manual. And some of you are very familiar, remember that in previous years, what we've done here in Rochelle Park is created a very specific calendar for the entire year. We want to float the idea of instead of doing that, urging you all as residents of the city to use the services of the city, which are available online at the city's website, it's listed right at the top of this flyer. You can go, you put in your address, you can click on the map, and up will come a calendar very specific for your address. You can either print it, or even easier and better is to sign up for text message reminders. You can sign up for reminders for your trash pickup, for your recycling pickup, for your yard waste pickup, and your bulk pickup. And I can assure you, as much as the sun rises or doesn't rise, at 6 p.m. the day before of that pickup, you will get a text message reminder. It's a free service provided by the city. It makes it easy and convenient for you to do the right thing, to put your refuse out at the right time. So we're really encouraging people to use that service um, and to do it right. And then also on this flyer are reminders about recycling and uh, using quality control. Contamination of recycling is a problem. Not necessarily your recycling, but citywide and globally it's a problem. And so we want to make sure that we're doing quality control. So these are reminders about what to put in your recycling cart and what to keep out of your recycling cart. And really encouraging people to use their recycling cart because actually that's the future of what we need to do in terms of attending to our resources and attending to our home, which we call the earth. So, take this home, take a look at it. If you have serious questions about 
this approach, or for whatever reason you feel you would need a very specific calendar and not go to the city's website, um, let us know. Are there questions? Comments? How large is Pardon me? It's about three feet by three feet by three feet, roughly. So you can figure you can put out a couch, you can put out a chair, you can put out a couple of items like that, but if you put out a mountain, you should call for a special pickup, and a special pickup um, from the city costs $50. Other questions? All right, thank you. Found on this a little bit. It's about the size of your washer or your dryer. You can picture that. It's not actually very big. Um, it's from my personal experience that you can put out much more than a cubic yard, and as long as it's arranged properly at the side of the road, they usually will take it. In other words, they're pretty generous, they are not strict about, but if you go nuts, you know, and you clean out your whole house and create a mountain, as Marky was indicating, yeah, they're not going to take that. The other thing that's real important is, even though it's the same day that the material is collected, yard waste in bulk, don't make the mistake of mixing them up or putting them, the two piles in close proximity because it's actually two different trucks, two different crews that come in there, don't have time to be separating your stuff for you. So it's good, in fact, make them very far apart. Put the yard waste way over here, put the bulk way over here, so there's no commingling of this material. So you make it easy for the employees on the trucks to pick your junk up. Please make a special point when you have new people move to your block to talk to them about recycling and the whole solid waste system because lots of times the person isn't from Detroit, so they aren't familiar with our system, or they're from Detroit, but they haven't had recycling in their neighborhood. We are very lucky. We were almost one of the very first Detroit neighborhoods to have recycling. We were like a pilot project for the city for recycling. So we've been doing it a long time. Lots of other neighborhoods in Detroit don't have that history. So just because the person may be moved from another neighborhood in Detroit doesn't mean they necessarily know about recycling. And it always is appropriate to remind people that it's been more than 10 years since the city has accepted yard waste in plastic bags. That won't fly anymore. You can't do that. You have to put it in the paper bags or if you have a trash can. Remember trash cans? Either a metal or plastic 33 gallon trash can. You can put your yard waste in that, but you do have to write on the container yard waste. Whatever. That's their requirement. You can put that can trash can out full of yard waste and they will empty it and put it back down and go on to the next house. So, other questions about solid waste, yard waste, any of this. So, what we're signaling is that schedule, that long list of dates, two-sided, that we've printed in the past, that we pass out in January, we're flagging you, we're, we're not planning to do that. Instead, we're going to print this recycling reminders, and we're going to encourage you and everybody you know to get with it on your computer, type your address in, find the little schedule that will pop up, or text your address to the number that we give you in just a minute, and then you'll get automatic text reminders. Every Sunday night, ping, at 6 o'clock, my phone rings, and it says, Tomorrow is your trash pickup day. And then tomorrow is your recycling day. And then the alternate weeks on Monday night at 6 o'clock, another notice saying the yard waste and the bulk pickup is coming. Yes, sir? Will you still uh, have the e blast just as a reminder as well? Like, yes. Yes, yes, yes. We will continue to have 
at the top of the e-blast. It always says, this week, blah, 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 is the schedule, and then next week it's going to be this. If you're subscribed to the e-blast, that comes to your email inbox on Sunday mornings, and that's always the first item that David has up there. Yes, we will definitely continue with that. Okay. Other questions or comments or reactions to the idea of not having a printed schedule. I know that there are people in the neighborhood, I can think of two right at the top of my head, uh, elderly people who do not use computers and who do not have a smartphone. And Mark and I will work, we will create a schedule and people who need that additional assistance, we can print them out and get a copy. But printing copies from the whole neighborhood, 1600, doesn't seem needed. Deborah, did you have a question? Yes, and you have one thing. If it's a block happens, if we can, one, we know who are in the block, that sure. we can get Did everybody hear Deborah's asking, could, could a copy of the full schedule be sent to all the block captains, and that way if you have a resident who needs a printed out schedule, block captains could do it. Yeah, that's not a problem. We can do that for sure. Okay. Or another thing that you could do is in the um, newsletter. <laughs> in the newsletter that you send out, maybe you could just let you know the neighbors know that this is the end of that. Yes, we would definitely put the notice in the January, February to go along with this to yeah. say, hey, we have a new system. Note the insert. Go to the website, sign up for the reminders, text your address, and so forth. We have to get with it in this age of technology, everybody. All right? All right. Next up, we have Ms. Brianne Bell, the new GRDC Workplace Manager is going to tell us all about Small Business Saturday. Thank you, Pam, for squeezing me on your agenda. I so appreciate it. Um, I'm actually here to uh, let you guys know that we're having, uh, GRDC is hosting Small Business Saturdays. I'm not sure how many of you attended last year. So we have a couple of old um, things going on, and we've added a lot of new things. So those who are uh, unfamiliar with Small Business Saturdays, we have four host locations, which include Cuts, Lounge, Pages Bookshop, um, Always Brewing, and the Grand River Workplace. And inside those host locations, we have small business ven vendors um, ranging from apparel to uh, soaps, to a jewelry, and so we try to support uh, the development of these small businesses um, on this day. So we so encourage everyone to come out and support uh, our local small business vendor vendors for that day. Um, so we have exciting new things this year. We uh, have Pages is doing free mimosas in the morning, which is a cool little thing they're doing. Um, yeah, so come up with mimosas. <laughs> Um, we're having a Mount House for the Children. Danielle from Kids Kingdom is sponsoring free daycare at the, at the Northwest Gallery Annex, um, right next to Pages, if you guys are familiar with it. Um, she's doing free daycare, and then we're also having free massages uh, down at Spa Appeal. Mm -hmm. So when you get there, you sign up for, uh, they're slotted times, and then you get free massages, now that's five pill. And we have delicious food trucks and activities. Um, we have some artists coming out. Um, we have a, a, a lead dance studio is having a dance performance um, this year. So we try to get uh, people who are along the Grand River Corridor. We want everyone to be involved in some way because it's such an important event. Um, so with these events, uh, we have, we need volunteers. So we have two shifts for volunteers, and we only have two shifts that are two positions that are outdoors, and that is the bounce house activity and the s'mores. Oh, we have a s'more station as well. That will be along with Always Brewing, who is giving out free uh, cocoa. So we have a s'more station 
have always ruled. So those are our two outdoor uh, positions that we have. And then in our four host locations, we have a uh, host that you'll be having a vendor brochure. And then you will also be, uh, we need a registration uh, person to do registration because we're doing a raffle as well. So Royal Fresh Market donated some gift certificates. Um, we have some fun raffles to do that we're doing every hour um, at our DJ location. So that's also something new that we're doing this year. Um, so with that said, we need volunteers at each host location and the um, activities um, station. So if you're interested, we have two shifts. We take their um, starting from 9.15 to 1.15 and then 1.15 to 4.15. So if this is something that you're interested, please sign up. I'm going to pass this around. I am so under the weather today. So I'm going to pass this around if you guys. Yeah, uh, we can always make arrangements too. But these are already marked out for your time slots. So you, it's easy to sign up. And just on the back, could you put your name and email? And then we'll contact you that way. Um, did anyone have any questions about small businesses? November 24. The day after Black Friday. It's a national um, event. It's not just a Grand Mount Rosedale event, but um, we're, we're actually partnering with MDOT this year. We're not sure in which capacity that we're doing that. So if you ride on the, they have a new Grand River Express going from Evergreen to downtown, I believe. Um, so if you ride the bus that day, we're trying to um, get free bus passes for the people who get on and off. Um, using that express bus, if you, I'm not sure how they're promoting it yet. So, yeah. So Thanksgiving Thursday, Black Friday, yes. Small Business Saturday. Yes, that's the way it'll go. Yes. So Black Friday is your reminder for Small Business Saturday. I have something to do tomorrow. But if you can't volunteer, we still encourage you to support the vendors that will be there because there's some really cool event of vendors. We have old, old vendors, um, our favorites, and then we have awesome new vendors. So come check it out and let me know if you want to volunteer. And um, my name is Brian again. Thank you. You know, we all often say we want more retail businesses in our neighborhood. We want to be able to shop in our neighborhood. We have to support the ones that are here. They need customers, they need people to come in and shop, and this is a great opportunity. They'll be strutting their stuff, you know, they, they'll have specials and deals. It'll be a fun thing. Bring your kids, bring your grandkids, there are all these activities. We'll pray for good weather for them, because that can always be a big factor, but um, Brianne is doing a beautiful job of pulling this all together. And I really encourage all of you to be a shopper, be a customer, and be a volunteer. If you could put a couple hours in, I know Brianne would really appreciate it. Next up, the holiday pancake breakfast. That perennial favorite. Here come our co-chairs, Nancy and Carol. Hello, everybody. You know, I just want you to love each other and have fun, okay? We are blessed that we are not in California right now with the fires licking at our back doors. But you ever thought how many folks in this room work to keep us safe? and to keep us happy, and healthy, and clean, and pretty. I think a lot of people in this room do this, and they've done it over and over and over again. So this year, we are asking that the annual pancake breakfast team get together. Starting with Connie, and Nancy, and Claire, and Amy, and Rebecca, and Earl, and all the other people who put it together. There are a lot of people that work in the background with Phil and his crew, and I really do appreciate that. I really do thank you for that. So I want you to sign up again to do the same. 
same thing we did last year. But this year, I want you to be thankful that we're not in California. Thankful that we had a chance to make some revisions in our government. Yeah. Woo! Okay. That proposition you voted about on redistricting, let's be thankful. Let's follow that and get it done. So, sign up for the annual pancake breakfast. You can call 313-493-0824. That's my telephone number. You can come by my house. I'm on the corner of Artesian and Linwood. I got all the leaves stacked out there on the wrong day. <laughs> and I just want to say, I, I feel so blessed to be in this community and so blessed to be among you that work so hard to keep it like it is and to make it better. I just, I, I just love y'all and hope to continue loving you. I'm passing this out. When, when is it? When is it? When My is number it? is no, no, three one three four nine three zero eight two four. I drive a silver Toyota, <laughs> and I usually, if I see people in the street, or if I know where you live, I'll hunt you down. <laughs> like folks like Chris and Ruth, I'll hunt down. Jim and Pam, I hunt them down. When is it? I've been kind to some of you. When is it? When is it? First Saturday in December. Uh, December. Start saying name. Uh, <laughs> Chris, you gonna be there? I'll be there. I you gonna be there? I got you. I got your phone right in my contact. All right. <laughs> you gonna be there? Yeah, I'm going Okay. Come on. Oh, I got Say you, you got one. Tell Claire, I've been to your house three times. She signed up. Yeah. She's already signed up? Yeah. All right, signed up. I'm just going to add a comment to if you prefer emailing, I'm the one that sends out tons of emails. It's simple, nancy2061. You can also volunteer that way. So this is a fun event. We have quite a group of people that come, but we can always use people a little bit later on in the day, and especially for cleanup. But if you've never been to it with your kids, grandkids, whomever, it's fun as an adult, too. It's real good. Yes, it is. Starts off the holiday season, kind of gets you going. So. And the response from you folks has always been great, as Carolyn has been saying. So we'll see you on the 1st of December. Oh yes, we need to <laughs> revise our flyer. The flyer doesn't mention it, but there is, of course, a visit from Santa, as you can see in the picture, and there are little gifts for all the kids, books or little toys, and so forth. So it's, it works out really nice. We sing carols together. You get all the pancakes and scrambled eggs and turkey sausage that you can eat with juice and coffee and tea. So, such a deal, you know? Yes, it is. It's really a, a nice event. So, put it on your calendar, plan to come, round up your neighbors, come and have fun. It'll be great. No, you just pay at the door. Four bucks for adults, three bucks for kids. There's no tickets ahead of time. You just pay at the door. Yes, Miss Mary? Oh, okay. Other questions about the pancake breakfast? All right, we're going to move along. Dustin Campbell from uh, Commissioner Bell's office is here. Dustin, are you, where did you go? I just saw you. Now you evaporated. Dustin, Dustin from Commissioner Bell's office, are you here? Is he out there, Frank? No? All right, well, he was here. We'll move on. Maybe we'll find him in a few minutes. Um, 
Next, it's time to meet the new neighbors. Since we last met, which was September 12th or 13th, I think, so 60 days ago, we have five new households. We actually have more than that, but I think the people, you know, it's still in transition. The people haven't actually moved in yet, or the block captain hasn't been able to deliver the new neighbor kit and get their names cut. So we'll welcome them at the next one. But for sure, we have five new households. I don't know. I reached out to all of them, and I don't know if any of them are here tonight, but I'll take you through their names and their locations. We'll see if they're among us. Greg Sanders, who's on my block of Faust, right at the corner of Faust and Chalfont. You will remember that house used to have gorgeous landscaping, remember? And then another person came in and she wasn't so much into landscaping, but now we have a new owner and we'll see. Yeah, he uh, is a young man, a uh, single man he works for. There's Dustin wandering around. Um, the new owner works for Quicken Loans. He's a mortgage banker and seems to be a very nice young man who immediately offered to help everybody rake their leaves and also indicated he's happy to come if you have leftovers at your house. <laughs> <laughs> seems like a good trade-off. <laughs> I'm sure he's probably at work, unfortunately. Being a mortgage banker for Quicken is like being an indentured service. <laughs> 900 hours a week. I have a son who's in that same position. PJ Black on Warwick, are you here? Patricia PJ Black, not here. She prefers PJ. Beautiful house with that nice field stone chimney. This is uh, north of Finkel, between Finkel and Grand River. Very nice. Sharon Cunningham, are you here? This is a really cute house on Piedmont. It's just south of Finkel on the west side of the street. I like the, the nice way the garage, you can drive in and then you're, you know, the garage is attached. It's very cozy. So she just moved in very recently. Miller Dugalek and Elizabeth Fox, also on Piedmont. This is north of Finkel. Are you among us? Not tonight. Okay. And Ms. Tamika Thompson, are you here tonight? She was, she did respond and she wasn't sure if she could make it. This house, you probably don't recognize it on Outer Drive because for about five to six years, it's had a big plywood board over that front window. You remember that house? Finally, the board is off the window and a person has bought the house and is living there. So we're really excited about Ms. Tamika being in this house and not having that board on the window anymore. All right. So. Our next agenda item is the presentation about the Grand River Streetscape Project. So I'm going to invite Sharita to come on up here and get her presentation loaded up. And while she's doing that, Dustin is going to come for <coughs> and bring us greetings from Commissioner Bell. Hopefully that will all work. Greetings, everyone, uh, from your Wayne County Commissioner, Alicia Bell. Uh, she wanted to make sure that I came out tonight to uh, thank you all for your support um, as she represents you guys in Wayne County. Uh, if there's anything that you need, um, please feel free to call our office, 224-0936. That's area code 313. If you need a quicker response or a response after hours, you can call 313-522-7997. And we'll be more than happy to help you out with whatever it is that you need. All right, thanks so much for having me tonight. Okay, so we'll 
take a deep breath and wait a minute while Sharita gets her presentation loaded up on the computer. The big news that Sharita's going to give you all the details about is orange barrels in our future coming soon to Grand River. If you were here back in 2007, 2008, I think, you remember they resurfaced Grand River and it was quite an undertaking. It took quite a while, but it was really wonderful once they finished. All right, they're going to do another big project, a million dollar project on Grand River from Southfield, I think, all the way to Burr Road, which is where Billy Rogal got. Well, I need to talk. She's got it. <laughs> I, I'm just spinning some time here. I'm just giving them the big, broad highlights. So, Sharita's got the details. This is Sharita. Everybody remember Sharita. She came to our meeting before. She's here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Resident engagement in the process is going to be really important. 
Um, so the first design meeting is going to happen December the 13th um, at 5.30 p.m. at Pearl Recreation Center. Um, and this is where you can start to inform uh, the type of amenities and priorities that are going to go into um, the streetscape design. Um, so as you see here, there will be um, opportunities to give input December, January, February-ish, and then in April. The thing is you want to be there for the earlier sessions um, because by April it's going to be 80% complete. And there's going to be very little um, means for us to, to have an input. So this again just gives a little more information about the entire scope of the project. Um, so they're resurfacing, um, defining parking lanes, evaluating signals and turns. Hopefully we get some uh, new lights that we can actually do uh, some beautification kind of stuff with. Whether or not we want bike lanes, um, some of the actual streetscape improvements uh, include trees, pedestrian lighting, um, mid-block crossing, so you don't have to play frog, frog anymore. Um, bus shelters, bike racks, benches, um, and opportunity for signage and neighborhood banners and things like that. So that's the streetscape portion. Um, the next piece that is also coming is called the Strategic Neighborhood Fund. Has anyone heard about this? Oh, good. All right. Um, so. Uh, the city actually rolled this initiative out in three neighborhoods initially. Um, Livernois, McNichols area, the south, uh, southwest side of town, and then in the villages. And came back and decided to expand that initiative to seven neighborhoods, of which um, our area is included in that Grand River Northwest. Um, so the investment strategy really includes commercial corridors, parks, streetscapes, and single-family stabilization. However, in our area, in Grandmont Rosedale, it will be commercial corridor and streetscape improvements. Um, and so, Grandmont Rosedale, uh, because you have a CDC, um, we have been um, meeting and working with some of the folks um, to, to help get this going. Um, what we've asked for is for um, to be able to help select sites, to be able to help um, for the community to have some involvement in terms of like what developers um, come to the area to start acquiring sites now um, because we know that when people hear about streetscape improvements and development com coming, um, prices can start to go up for no reason. Um, so we've asked for that and we've also asked that um, there be at least one project um, that is owned by the community through GRBC. Um, and so part of what this initiative does is it picks um, what's called a micro district because that's a lot of area. Um, so the micro district would be a one to two block area. Um, what folks have talked about up to now is potentially Warwick to Evergreen. Um, and basically we're encouraging, encouraging them to target sites that have been long vacant and blighted and um, to get those sites so that we can activate them and put businesses in them so that we can um, begin to move the Grand River Corridor and give it the same look and feel and character and strength that the housing and the residential areas have. We want that same feel and aesthetic um, on Grand River. Um, and we are fortunate in this area to have a CDC that's been able to work with the city and other, and other partners to make sure that community priorities and vision um, go into how these things are implemented. Um, so again, in terms of next steps and ways that people can get involved, um, December 13th is a really important meeting and I just found out at the end of the day today so it didn't make it into the presentation, but that meeting at Crowell is at 5.30 p.m. on December 13th. And I uh, would encourage you all to let folks know and get folks out. Um, for more information on the overall plan for the Grand River Northwest area, um, you can go to that link. And then the full presentation, if you weren't able to be at that first streetscape meeting, um, is available at that link. And um, we can maybe email those out for folks. And, and then my contact information is there as well. 
Um, and so, again, with the common development and things like that, um, it'd be great if you can use your neighborhood association leaders, like Pam, and I know folks from a few of the other neighborhoods are here, um, and your GRDC board reps to feed us information if there's particular sites or, or different things and you, you um, have ideas and thoughts and if there's ways um, that we can help to inform the process, we, we want to do that. Any questions? Um, is for the Strategic Neighborhood 2.0, does that have anything to do with the Steve Ballmer money? No. No? That's something separate? Yep. Okay. So, can you say that it's going to be one street and one lane? Just like that one? Just like one lane, one each way? No, I did not say that. I saw it up there. So, you'll still be the two lanes that we provide that. On Grand River? Yes. Um, Grand River will most likely, I think, well, that's still to be determined, but I think right now they're looking at like a five lane option. Like what? Five lanes, so two lanes on each side and a turn lane. So I didn't see anything up there that one lane and one lane. It said they wouldn't do a three, it said that they would not do a three lane option, that's what it said. Oh, okay. Yeah, it said that's a no.
So they won't let you put your black pants, you know, we're here for life. Anyway, we're having a meeting, as you see up there, um, on December 18th at the GRDC um, building. And any new people that would like to hear about radio control, I'm right there at that table over there. I'm not going to um, belabor everybody that knows about it that's been coming to the meeting. Also, for my radio controllers, raise your hands. I see all of you out here have a bunch of half the room is radio controllers. So you guys are missing out if you don't, if you're not a radio controller. Um, the city is giving the city, there's a citywide mink, jingle and mingle. You'll be getting an email pretty soon. Jingle and mingle on December 9th, Sunday, December 9th. It's similar to the one we had last year. The city is um, putting it on at the corner ballpark. You'll be getting an email about that. Just want to give you a heads up on it. And if you are interested in going, um, just let me know. If you have any questions about Radio Patrol, I'm over there. And everybody have a good evening. Thank you. So we have a surprise speaker, Miss Stephanie Young, who just arrived.
how their students will be looked at. So this is fantastic. We're really excited about it. It's that old saying, uh, make what? Lemonade out of the lemons. Mm -hmm. It's the law. We've got to follow the law. But it's great that the SRO, the school uh, reform office, isn't doing it. So we have Detroiters uh, able to um, define our own destiny with this rating system. And so to that, I'm just going to give you guys our website. It's cecdetroit.org. That's the reason I'm late tonight. We had a community engagement meeting that we had planned, and my bad, I didn't have our meeting on my calendar. I'll do better next time it was planned. But we had several people come out to hear about this because we want schools, we want parents to know what's coming. The last thing you want is to wake up one day and see this letter grade next to the school that your child attended. You want to know how we got there. And we're not doing this to point fingers and say, this is a bad school and this is a good school. We're doing this to say, this is where we are. How do we get better? These are some schools that are doing pretty good. How do we make them better? These are some schools that are struggling. What are the resources that the district, that the charters are going to have to pour into these schools to make them better? We're concerned about the proficiency of our students. So this is what I'm doing now, gang. How, how does this sound to you? It sounds like Woo! All of my service to people. So I see Ms. Dan has gonna take some questions. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes, CEC, which stands for Community Education Commission, CEC Detroit, spelled out dot org. Thank you. Other questions? Are you able to speak on the success of this busing thing that goes on around? Oh, the sure, Central yeah. Island? How's it going? How many do you have signed up? And are kids staying in the city? And what's the story? Yeah, that's one of the things that we did. So the Community Education Commission, straight out the gate, we published a school guide, which has information on every public school in the city of Detroit, both a district and charter. And in addition to that, we kicked off a pilot known as the Gold Line. The goal line is where we have 10 schools, six a DPSCD, and four charter schools. And what we do is we have a loop. So there's a loop of these 10 schools. We pick kids up in the morning. We take them to their school. If you live near, so one of our schools is um, Cornerstone Lincoln King. That is uh, a charter school. If you live near, near Cornerstone, but you go to school at John R. King, you can get on the bus right there at Cornerstone and ride the bus to King, John R. King, and the same thing in the evening. We also have after school programs at Northwest Activity Center. We have over 200 kids enrolled there to get enrichments like robotics, gymnastics. We have the Wendy Hillier Gymnastic Foundation. She's a Cast Tech graduate who went on and became an Olympian, and now she's giving back. And so she wanted to be a part of this. So we have all these different enrichments in addition to academic help. We have parents that come and say, you know, robotics is great, but my son needs help with math, or my daughter needs help with reading. So we're offering those things too. And we did that to show um, folks that are leaving the city, we can do what they do. We got the buses, and we have after school programs. And right now it's at no cost to the parents that have their children participate. So we haven't, we're looking at that now. We're working with Michigan State as well as Wayne State to help us look at what, what we've decided to do. Is it working? We've only been doing this since September. So you know we don't have that, you know, that much data, but it's coming in. And I believe that it is. When we talk to parents, parents are so excited about this program. I talked to a mom who works in Troy. And she said, had it not been for this bus loop, I didn't know how my kids would get to school. And she had to make a decision, do I get my kids to school or do I lose my job? Parents shouldn't have to make those choices, but those are reasons that they put their kids on buses to take them to places like River Rouge where they can put them on the bus real early in the morning and they can ride on the bus for an hour <laughs> before school starts. But the parent was able to get to work on time. And I sat her down, I said, look here, baby, I, if that's what you need, I got something for you. Uh, the gold line bus, if you okay with your baby riding a loop once before the school opened, then they'll be okay. So now she has her kids, everybody know, they show up early, they pass their school once and go around the loop and come back. That gets her to work on time, that gets the kids to school on time, they're able to have breakfast in the morning, 
there and ready to learn. This is a service for parents. It's not about it, it's about the parents. Yes, ma'am, and it's about students doing what they do. Amen. Hurrah! 